Gracias por escuchar y ver nuestro show renovandoriquezas.com. Búscanos y danos un like y cinco estrellas en YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn y cualquier otra red social en donde puedas encontrarnos. No somos responsables si esto no te funciona. Lee siempre las letras pequeñas. No creas en nada de lo que decimos. Los resultados varían dependiendo de cuánto estudies y hagas tu diligencia. Esto es solo para los que toman acción y sirve de entretenimiento. Hello, everyone. What do you say, Mr. Dennis? How's everything going, Ricardo? Great. And we have a special guest today for all our um, fans and audience out there. Uh, who do we have with us, uh, Ricardo? We got Mr. Dale um, <laughs> Terry. <laughs> Dale Terry. <laughs> Jesus Christ! You see, this is how this is how all this show starts. You know, they're all, they're not scripted. Uh, you see, I said your last name before you even pull out the card, so That's that, right. that, that That's was right. a good catch. <laughs> uh, Mr. Dale Terry with Insurance Recovery, and. And um, this is going to be a very interesting show. It is, it because is. Because Mr. Dale has got a wealth of knowledge when it comes to properties that have either uh, flooded, burned down, hit by tornadoes, uh, and basically any casualties um, on, a, on a property. Most likely Mr. Dale has uh, dealt with it. And um, he's also um, involved in the firefighting community. Yep. He's involved in, in, well, many different things. I'm not going to go and speak for him, but I want to introduce somebody that uh, you might want to pay attention to, and if you need his services, we're going to get you his contact information. That way, he can help you in the future. He's done a great job with us. We had, a, If you guys remember, we had a property that caught fire back in December. Um, all of a sudden, I got a phone call from a man called uh, Dale Terry. And he says, uh, hey, Ricardo, um, I know your property caught fire this weekend, and uh, I need to talk to you. And I'm thinking, okay, this is like maybe the city uh, manager or the uh, fire marshal, the fire or marshal <laughs> that wants some information or whatever. I'm like, who is this guy? And he's like, man, this is what I do. I help people with uh, uh, claims with the insurance company, make sure they're done right. Uh, we're objective. We work for for you, so we make sure that you get what you're supposed to get, and you don't get screwed over by by um, a third party. So I said, "Cool, no problems." And I call right right away. I call one of my business partners, and I said, "Hey, I'm going out of town. I got the phone number for uh, Mr. Dale, and um, yeah, I need you to talk to him and get it all rolling because I think he's going to be able to help us uh, with this particular claim." And sure enough, it took like four months for the insurance company to actually um, come to the settlement. And I know for a fact that we probably were going to get a lot less than we were supposed to. And thanks to Mr. Dell and his work, uh, now we're back working in the property and we got what uh, what we were entitled to. So thank you for uh, being here today, uh, thank today you. Dale. Thank you. And uh, thank you for everything you've done for us. Uh, we really appreciate it. And I think this is going to be a long lasting relationship. I hope so. Um, going forward. And uh, I'm pretty sure that we will be sending people your way once they have their claims. Um, and, and it's going to be an interesting uh, program because I know nothing about what Dale does. So I'm going to be self-serving uh, myself here, asking questions about all these insurance uh, claims and how they work. And, you know, by answering questions, I'm, I'm pretty sure people that are watching will learn a lot too so why don't we start asking dale you know your background dale how, how did you get started who how, is dale terry yeah <laughs> <laughs> where do you come from dale social <laughs> security number bank account <laughs> uh i've been a public insurance adjuster is what they officially call us okay. or loss consultants okay um i live in katie I've lived, Katie, uh, for 20, 21 years. So you've seen the growth. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I've seen the growth. Um, I got with the uh, fire department uh, uh, as a ESD commissioner. An ESD commissioner is a commissioner that provides emergency services. 
um, okay. a fire and ambulance services for uh, a, a region. And so I'm elected every four years to this position and I, I oversee the uh, operations of the fire department. I'm not the fire chief, but I'm an elected board. I'm okay, you're in the board. I'm you're on, on the, the board. board of directors. Right. So, um, and the reason why I got into that was because of the fact is that I've been an insurance adjuster for so long, I could see what the needs of the fire departments were, and because I go out and I see fires, floods, disasters all the time, I know what I'm looking for, and I know what they need, and I felt I was pretty qualified. You're sort of like a CSI <laughs> after the fact, you know. Yeah, that's the truth. I mean, hey, fire breaks out. Who do I call? Well, fire, well firefighters are going to show up first. Yeah, I think we should start there because, like I said, I'm completely. And, and the only the only reason I say fire is because I had a property that caught fire and it keeps ringing back. But I'm pretty sure there is all sorts of events that oh, you yes. have to look into it, and you're like, okay, people from Mars landed in this property and it broke down the roof, and that's how we determined because we couldn't know, we couldn't find where this metal was from, you know? <laughs> the composition of the metal was not of this earth. So, uh, so let, let, I mean, I don't know if we can back and, and start, you know, let's say there's a house, catches fire. First thing, of course, you call 911. The fire department shows up. They fight the fire. Fight the fire, right? Take control of the fire. What happens from that point on? Okay. What happens at that point, what should happen from that point is that you then call your insurance company and report the claim, whether okay. it be a fire, a flood, tornado, like what happened up in Sealy last couple weeks ago, and you, you, you know, report the claim. But one of the things that you have to know when you're reporting a claim is don't stop with just calling them. There's provisions that are set up inside your insurance policy. There's a time limit that the insurance company has to pay your claim by, but that time clock doesn't start until you give them written notice. So what you need to do is after you call it in, you need then to send in a, a written notice saying, I had a fire, flood, wind, water, whatever, at this address on this date. And that serves as the official notice of loss to the insurance carrier. Now, when they receive that, that's going to trigger a series of events that they have to comply with, investigating and, and a number of other things. But the important thing is it puts a time limitation on how long the insurance company takes to pay you. See, And, and I guess we could say that's the first big difference from dealing with, like, a car uh, wreck a uh, claim which most people are used to because at some point in our lives you know we we have an accident and we call you know our insurance company and it's as simple as a phone call and they'll ask you for the police report sometimes and you know it's a fairly easy process to go through but from, from what you're saying that's the first big difference from a normal car accident claim yeah, and I remember it, it has uh, to be written when I had when I had our, uh, when we had our claim or our event that's the first thing they'll mention is you need to call your your insurance company and, and put the claim as soon as possible so i guess the, the fire department told you so no, no no nobody told me anything i oh. went there i met with the firefighters and i was like do you guys need me here for anything and they're like not really yeah are you the owner and it's like yeah okay good luck here it is wow, and okay. i left so, so no guidance whatsoever no, no, no. They, their job is to put out the fire and make sure everybody's safe, and that's it. That's where it stops. Okay. Um, and and so I left, and my thinking process is, okay, you need to do something. So I pick up the phone, and I call my insurance agent, mm -hmm. who at the time was in Vegas playing, because he goes there a lot. So I was like, <laughs> hey, man, I got a... I got a I got this fire, the, the property caught, of, caught on fire, and um, what do I need to do? And then he goes, well, Ricardo, what you need to do is uh, you need to go file your claim and keep me posted, blah, blah, blah. When I get back, I'll get with you. That was Sunday. Mm -hmm. The very next day, I got a call, like around 8 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. and it was Mr. Dale. Okay. So he was on it. I mean, like, he, he probably saw the report, and he said, okay, this house just came up. 
I gotta call this guy. This is a lead. So I'm thinking now, as, as if I was Dale, he's getting a hot lead. <laughs> right? Literally hot. And that was very hot. You know, he was still smoking by the time he gave me a call. So let, uh, let's ask Dale. How how do you know about fires that happen around town? I mean, are you in a some sort of like fire department list or something? Mm, well, I, I uh, subscribe to a service, and okay. it's, it's not just around town. I know where uh, events happen all around the country. Oh, so okay. By a certain time in the morning, I have a list of events, and then I can separate, you know, separate which ones were were as our company is interested in, yeah. and then we will go out and, and make the solicitations to those people and, and uh, evaluate how we can help those people. But one of the things is that after you give your notice to the insurance company, what what everybody has to understand is that. It's your responsibility to prove to the insurance company what the damages are. It's not their responsibility to tell you. See, or to because, find out from yeah, the marshal. Or well, yeah, because what happens is that when you're when you're when you're there and you, you it's you have to prove to them what your damages are. Because if they were to miss if it was their responsibility and they would miss something, then they would be responsible for it. So what they do is the policy clearly states that it is your responsibility to prove to the insurance carrier what the damages are. And their function is more like an audit. Now, if you fail to comply with that condition, if you fail to determine what the damages are, how it needs to be repaired, and the cost, yes, the insurance company will do it, but they're going to do it from their point of view, right? not your point of view. And I that see. could be very different very different and so understanding that since it's now your responsibility you have to know what that contract says what mm -hmm. did you buy what did you did you buy a replacement cost or were you looking to try to save some money and you buy an actual cash value mm -hmm. so what you bought is very important in how you're going to measure and document and present that claim to the carrier to get what you're rightfully entitled to because regardless of you know Whatever anybody thinks, the insurance company is only going to pay you what you can prove to them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what we do. And the better documentation you have, the better it is for you uh, when you're going in. So when you go to buy a policy, I know everybody's you know very curious and very um, cognizant of uh, their Cost. return. Yeah, their return on investments. What are my costs? I, um, I was talking to some, an attorney last night. And uh, he was telling me about a, a client of his who didn't have any insurance. The house caught fire, burned to the ground, and the tenants were standing outside with no insurance. Well, the guy who owned the house, it was a nice house, but he didn't ever do anything, and he didn't keep any records. So it was so easy for the insurance company, not the insurance company, but for the insured to get a lawyer and said, hey, could you send me the records of your HVAC system which started the fire? The guy didn't have any records for his HVAC system. He ended up paying $65,000 to those people who had no insurance because he never kept track of any of his maintenance records. Yeah. So when, when handling claims and what, your, what, your, what your, your clients need to know is that since it's your responsibility, the better documentation that you have to support your your mm -hmm. investment, the better your results are going to be. Because unfortunately, with rental properties, most people, they do one of two things. They'll buy a replacement cost policy, but they buy the minimal amount. Mm -hmm. Well, there's requirements in that policy that you're insured to value. And if you aren't insured to value, there's a penalty that's going to be applied for not being insured to value. I mean, you know, so why sh why should I pay you dollar for dollar what you're entitled to if you're not paying me dollar for dollar for premiums? So then can, they go can, can, I'm, I'm, I'm lost there. So <laughs> let's see if we can go back a little bit. Okay. okay. Let's say I'm a landlord and I have a property that at some point it was appraised or valued at $100,000. And I go and find an insurance company and say, hey, I want to insure this uh, property that I'm going to rent. And I want to uh, uh, insure it for $100,000, which is, again, the replacement value, correct? No, that's the retail market value. 
oh, replacement okay. costs. In a depressed market, people go in and buy buildings, houses, apartment complexes that are depre depressed price. Mm -hmm. Well, cause that's not what the, you should be insuring for. You should be insuring it for the replacement cost, what it's going to cost to build, build, that, a new one. build a new one from the slab up. up. Not okay. including the slab, but the slab up. Okay. okay, so in this case, let's say the house, again, the appraised value is $100,000, but somehow I determined as a contractor or whatever that, that if I needed to replace the entire house from the slab up, it would cost me $75,000. So should I insure it for the $100,000 market value, or it's never going to insure for that, or just the $75,000? replacement I would insure I try to insure properties or recommend to my clients I recommend that you get with your broker because mm -hmm. your your insurance broker should be but it, at least a hundred dollars a square foot if you're gonna buy replacement cost policy okay okay and it's different if you're gonna buy an actual cash value policy there's there's simple just for simplification there's two types you can buy replacement cost or actual cash value you, do you know the difference? No, please. <laughs> Replacement cost. My iPhone 7, right, is $700. Okay. Okay, that's my replacement cost. Well, this happens to be five years old. What would you give me for a five-year-old phone? Depreciation. Probably $200. $200. That's the actual cash value. That's I what I had. Right, actual cash value. I had actual cash value on my policy. Right. So what happens in, in like in your case, we had to, okay, in your case it was different because you- I just rehabbed the property. You just rehabbed, ago. that's right. You and I had, had records of everything. Absolutely. And it was a good looking property. It was very, it was very well maintained. You had good tenants. They took care of the property. Unfortunately, not everybody has that. Yeah. And so then when you start getting into uh, getting into the adjustment process with the insurance company and you have no records, you are really putting yourself behind an eight ball because, well, when did you paint it last? When was the carpet replaced? When did you service the HVAC system? When did you do any plumbing? When were your cabinets? How old is this? How old is that? And not knowing what to say to an insurance company is going to cost you tens of thousands of dollars because the depreciation could be as high as 40 to 50 percent. No, we, we actually took a big hit from yes. which we were supposed to get like forty thousand dollars more but because of the depreciation we we got a uh, we got much lower so we all we got almost like 75 percent of the claim. Um, I, I don't know if those numbers are right but somewhere around that neighborhood. Now if, if Ricardo would have insured that property for replacement value then he would have gotten more money yes right? absolutely a he, lot more he would have got a lot more money and he, he would have had a more uh, more benefits because a lot of times with the actual cash value policies you don't have loss of rents you don't have code upgrades mm -hmm. okay so there's law and ordinance coverages there's a lot of little extra things that are hidden in a policy good, good thing is i flip houses and my cost is different than that's right. than, than from a regular homeowner but a regular homeowner with what i got on this claim they probably couldn't do it no 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 they couldn't do it so wow. the thing is that understanding that again now it's your responsibility if you don't have any of this paperwork and you don't you don't know under, understand the policy that you bought and what you have to do to present it you're you're never going to win mm -hmm. you're always behind the eight ball because you don't have the arguments in which look to, the insurance company is going to work towards their advantage of course they're yeah. not looking after your interest well um, it's like it's this the way it is yeah it's it's like it's like this when you're paying them money you're an asset to them right okay but now you've made a claim you're a liability that's right and liabilities have to be controlled in your business you could control your liabilities I control my liabilities Correct. they're just doing the same thing they're really nice guys M most every adjuster I meet is a nice oh, guy. oh they're great people yeah great people but they have a company that sets the parameters and if you don't know the parameters you're never gonna win in the game yeah I remember when I told my insurance agent that I was hiring an adjuster he just flew off the hand wheels. I mean, this man cussed me out on the phone, and I'm like, is this my agent? Like, really? Wow. Yeah. Um, so, so he's not my agent anymore. Um, but 
he's missing out on a lot of policies now because you know how much we've grown so so i guess the insurance company must have given them the agree i mean you know like if, if if one of their clients is hiring a an adjuster then they must get some heat from the insurance company saying why did you i mean if not he wouldn't be upset why would it be upset if it, it wasn't because he he knew that he was going to get well you know, uh, the his, talk. his point of view was listen i'm your your agent and i should be able to help you and oh. i said yes you're going to help me but i'm going to get my guys to do the paperwork for me man i got no time the last thing i want to be doing is is putting paperwork together for a house that just caught fire Well, especially since you don't know what the policy says, you don't know the policy no. provisions, and your your agent isn't going to come out and measure it, tell you how many square feet Look, in your board feet. Agents are like my dad. My dad is in the insurance business, so I picked up the phone and I called him up. I said, "Listen, Dad, I got this dilemma, right? I, my insurance agent he's getting mad at me, and and I gotta listen to the guy too. I've been working with him for a little while. My insurance agent is listen is telling me that I should not hire uh, the public adjuster because they're just going to take a chunk of the money from from the claim. And I said that's right, but they're going to do the work for it. So I'm going I'm I'm okay with that. I mean, I'm going to pay somebody to handle that for me. Mm -hmm. And my dad is like, "Listen, I'm an insurance agent. And all we are is sales people. We are sales and marketing." If you want to hire whoever you want to hire to look after your claim, you are at the end of the day responsible because if you get more money or less money or whatever, we're not gonna, you know, it makes no difference to us. Exactly. So go get your insurance adjuster. This is my dad who's in the insurance yeah. business, right? And, and I would have thought that 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 insurance agent sh should have the same train of thought, right? Like, yeah, yeah I mean, guys, I'm not, I'm, the guy's old school, and, and I'm not doing this program to beat down the guy. Come on, no, we haven't named any names. No, 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 no. I'm not <laughs> gonna, I'm not gonna do that either. No. Uh, I still got respect for him, so hey, whatever. But at the end of the day, I we did the right thing, which well, is we listened to the professionals because we interviewed Dale a couple of times over the phone. Then he put us in contact with Mr. Danny, who did a phenomenal job. He met me at the property. You know, he taught. He, we were told. Everything we needed to do step by step in order to get this cl uh, claim resolved. And, and that's it. It happened. I see. Okay. But one of the things you have to know is one of the reasons why insurance adjusters don't, or insurance agents don't like us is because they have a loss reserves. They sell you a policy, they get a commission. When it comes to renewal the next year, they look at how many dollars were paid out on that, and that reduces the amount of commission they get the second time around. Right. So there's an incentive, the insurance company has an incentive to these guys to reduce the claims, keep them low, make sure they're good quality claims. Right. And that's what that's why they don't want anybody interfering with their program. Okay. So yeah. there was a there was that a reason by makes sense then. So you know who he works for now. He works for the insurance company of himself. Course. He's not working yeah. for the client. And that's wrong. You see, that that's why people like my father are so successful because he works for the client. Mm -hmm. He's not, you know, He will go to battle with any insurance company because of his client. Right. Um, yeah, stand behind what yeah, he sold. Yeah, he will stand behind on what he sold. So, mm -hmm. all right. So we got that squared away now, uh, thanks to the clarifications from uh, Mr. Dale. So, Dale, so tell us a little bit about Crossroads Insurance. What What do you guys do there? What How How was it born? And, you know, how was it created? And how long have you been doing this? Um I've been doing this 28 years. Uh, Crossroads is uh, myself and Ed Shin, my partner. Okay. We had worked for another large company and they changed their attitude a little bit. I was there for 22 years and they sold and went through some changes and um, I felt that it could be done a better way. And so uh, I stepped up and uh, with Ed Shin and, and put together these guys, and we've been doing it about now eight years. Oh, wow. Hired in some guys that we had known because of our experience. Yeah, yeah the knowledge. network. Right, and brought it together, and uh, we've been very successful at it. Good deal. We've got a, we have a website, and um, we have probably, we didn't ask for people to give reference letters. We asked for video testimonials. And it so, can't get any better than this. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and we're doing it live. So we got right now, look, Ashley Martin. Say, Hi, guys. Hey, we're going to see you tomorrow, Ashley. Uh, thank you for uh, plugging in. Mr. Maury is in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, he's part of our team. And he's just he just launched. Um, I just want to say congratulations to Maury on launching uh, 
real estate amigo. Maybe we need to bring uh, Maori one day, and uh, he can tell us everything that went behind his uh, him opening his brokerage in San Antonio, and uh, and um, tell us a, a little bit more on how he's helping people out there. And anyways, we, we're getting a few viewers here online, uh, so uh, a lot of good information from Mr. Dale. Um, one of the things is that when you're buying policies, again, look at your what kind of property you have. Do you have do you have a A property, a B, C? It makes a big difference because if 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 money's a concern, then you need to really talk to somebody who's going to be involved in in collecting that money because you can buy a replacement cost. If you don't buy enough, then you get a penalty. If you buy ACV, you need to know how much you should buy it for. So that way, after the depreciation, you still have enough money to rebuild that property. I think that was our case. We had enough, uh, right. sort of, borderline there to in order to rebuild uh, this, this property that we're actually going through the second rehab in three years. Uh, <laughs> but this rehab is gonna be much better now because it's gonna have a new roof, new framing, because we're reframing the, the, the roof area, new decking, 30 year shingles, um, new kitchen. I mean, we got it, it's on the studs. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing we didn't touch was the bathrooms, uh, tiling and all of that, because that was, it was not damaged. Right. So all we did was open from the back, that way we can replace the plumbing and, 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 and you know, go from there, but, but, um, going forward this is a lesson learned for us because now we have to sit down and review every policy we've got and make sure that instead of being uh wait what are the well instead actual of being cash cash value make it replacement value replacement value and you're gonna pay a little bit more right probably right but but before you decide that what is the area you're in how long you're right. going to keep it is it a flip or is it is it this is it important if if your return on investment if your margins are not very big and you need the uh, loss of income if it goes down yeah. you, you may you have to make those determ determinations and no, make sure that your policy fits the property and what your goals are so you're not going to go out there and, and say, I'm going to get the same policy for all my rentals. No, you should sit down and each property is a little bit different and yeah. take the time with your broker. But the reality is then is, is that I've been buying houses and we just say, hey, I just need a policy for X. Yeah. Right. And the broker quotes it and we see that, okay, that's not that bad. And we put it into our numbers. Oh, yeah, we cash flow. But then we run into things like this. It, it, we run into a claim and we're like... Uh, we should have a different policy here, not this one. Mm -hmm. And that's where that's where getting um, coached by the agent on what policies you need. Now, that's another thing, you know. You got to shop around for the same policy with different agents. Exactly right. Otherwise, you know, they're going to always want to sell you the Cadillac mm -hmm. and because that's more commissions for them anyways. Uh, yeah. So we've had that happen. We actually had an agent where we, we started giving them all the work. Anything that came, we just, and then I started seeing the numbers on the premiums, and I was like, oh my God, this premium doubled. How, how did that happen? What happens is they, because they think that it's on escrow, you're not gonna see the hit right away, and they just go ahead and change policies on you, and little, you know, did they know, I caught up on it on the first month, and boom, all the business is gone. So, right. so if, if, you know, if you're gonna buy a replacement cost policy, um, know what you're buying if you're going to buy an actual cash value policy where a lot of people nowadays are days are buying lloyd's policies right policies from different you know that are very low uh premiums but again realize that you are going to have a, a very difficult time in collecting the right amount of money on that policy it's like a national flood policy a national flood policy is the bare bones policy minimum coverage and trying to collect from the federal government, you want to talk about problems, uh, you've got to have documentation. So if you're going to buy the cheapest poly un policy, understand that you better have the, the your maintenance records and all that stuff to support to, because you have to fight that amount of depreciation that they have because on an actual cash value policy, you cannot get that replacement cost benefit. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that you keep very good records as to what is maintained, how it's maintained, and would you did that. A good example of a replacement policy will be maybe your house. 
right? If you live on a on a type A property, you know, like th yours. That's yeah. That's where I was gonna go next. You know, we have viewers that are real estate investors. Well, we also have people that you know are you know just own their primary residence. And I want to touch base in what are the difference in terms of what policy you should buy for your owner occupied uh, residence versus investment properties, and and how to protect your main asset, which is you know your house, you know your investment. Um, but I don't know if you want to finish the example you were gonna. Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna talk about my house, but let's say you got a house in Katy that's worth I don't know seven hundred thousand dollars. And you know it costs to build roughly $100 a square foot, mm -hmm. all right? You got a 4,500 square foot house, so that's $450,000 worth of building costs. Mm -hmm. But the property is actually valued at 700 grand because you got, I don't know, the expensive hardwood floors, the, the double well, paint. The area, window, that, that the, yeah, the area has appreciated more in value. The lot itself is probably 100 and some change. You, I would do a replacement cost um, on that particular property instead mm -hmm. of actual cash value yes on your on your personal yes. residence and and on good quality properties replacement cost is a, a if you insure it to value is the ideal situation you, my personal house I have a, an HOB remember there's different kinds of policies also HOAs HOBs what's uh, what's an HOB um, the base there's a lot of there's a lot of differences but basically if, in case of an event happens I get more money for um, uh, water loss I also get more money yes. for additional living expenses where I'm out of the place okay so there's a just a little caveats for I, I believe I got something very similar to that because yeah. I, when when I sat down with an insurance agent I was building the house and and he said what do you want and I said man I want I don't want to worry about anything he said, well, that's going to be more expensive. I said, I don't care. <laughs> it's yeah. my house. You know, you live in there. Mm -hmm. Most people in, in, in nicer communities that insured the building for the proper amount, where they get really hurt is that they do not buy enough insurance for on the inside. content. No. Right? They, don't have, they have no idea what. Over the years, you accumulate so much stuff, but all that stuff has value. Yes. Oh, it'll burn down. I mean, no. <laughs> and and it, and it will burn down, and it and burn it'll fast. it'll flood or a tornado or and anything else, and then all of a sudden you find out that oh wait a minute I didn't have nearly enough insurance. No. So I I went I went uh, all in when it came to the inside. I got more money inside of that house probably than than what the building is worth. So you know it's it's one of those things. You look at it. You say okay if I lose the building. And I, okay, they replace it. That's what you want, pretty much. Okay, mm -hmm. put me a new one here that looks just like the one I had. Okay, but what about your paintings? What about your computers? Oh well, yeah. It, what about your watches? Your, I mean, you, the, your wife's jewelry. Uh, How about books, the, the sentimental stuff? Memorabilia. That's right. Okay, your wedding pictures. Pictures. That's right. Your grandkids. All that kind of stuff. You can't put value on that. But see, what these kind of things you should do is take photographs of that. Whenever you go document. through your house, you've got to document it. Pull your drawers open when you're going to do a video in, of your house so that you have an idea. In case something happens, you have that available to Let's you. Let's do a timeout here. So for everybody that's watching right now, either on Facebook Live or later on in the podcast and YouTube, this is where you pull your pen in a notebook and write down exactly what Mr. Dale is saying you need to do in your house for a future claim. If it ever happens, we hope that it, you never go through a claim. But what does, so what is that, what does the homeowner have to do or how do we prepare as homeowners in the event, in the, in the event that we have to go through a claim? So rewind. Okay, so first of all, it's in buying the policy, first of all. Right. Okay. When you buy your policy, you get with your agent, make the agent come out to your property and look at it. Okay. Okay? Don't let him buy it over the <laughs> wow. phone. That's make, the first thing that no one does. I, I know <laughs> that. Because then, then there's you alleviate that problem. He knows what you have, so he can, he's able to price it the right way. Again, do you have hardwood floors? What kind of hardwood floors do you have? I have nailed down hardwood floors. Somebody else may have a laminate. 
Well, those aren't the same. They don't pay the same. So make your agent come out and look at what your property is so he has a good understanding to help you determine what that value should be. And then, then they set the values for the building and for the contents. The, the agent should see, hey, you've got a lot of collectibles up here. You like the Astros. You, you've got all these balls of them, the, the killer bees and all that. This is a value. And so they need to ensure it's a value. I had, uh, in my house, I have stickly furniture that's been passed down for four generations. Wow. So I had a appraiser come in and appraise that. So then I could buy a rider. So so at my house, I have the basic coverage for the box, and then we've, we've got the contents, and then I've got whatever other riders I have. If you have, if your wife likes jewelry, then make sure you have a jewelry rider because there's limitations. Yes. During a fire, it's covered, but theft, is a very limited yeah. amount on the theft coverage. So if you want to buy a rider, so know what you have, bring the agent out, make them look at it. Second of all, when you're living in the house, you're going to make changes. You're going to change out the cabinets. You're going to redo the bathrooms. And when you do that, make sure that you update your insurance to, to match that. Okay. And also during the process, through your years. You make, just did that in your bathroom. I know that. I mean, daily is talking, and my mind is like going, "Oh, you're yeah, like, man, I, I gotta do I all this mean. homework." <laughs> <laughs> and so then, after you after you you set the right amount, and you know what your right amount is now, and you're comfortable with it, and God God forbid forbid, forbid yeah. that anything should happen, but if it does, at least you know now you're covered. And then what you do is you go and you videotape all of your contents. And most people do it the wrong way. They get a video camera and they walk around and say, look, look, all this stuff. But they never open their doors. All the stuff inside your drawers is, is a tremendous amount of value. Well, you got to be careful if you ever look at Dennis's drawers. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, we don't want to see that. No. Okay? No, but that's only for you, Dennis. <laughs> Videotape it and leave it there on a safe box somewhere out of your house. And yeah. I would say... Make sure the videotape is not in the house that might, you know, cut fire. You put it in, in a cloud system or something uh, or somewhere yes, outside of the property. If you, if you take pictures that would be you very videotape sad. your property, make sure you put that cassette somewhere in your bank, you know. <laughs> or, or your mother's house or well, somewhere else. I would, I would want to put it in a safe somewhere because the reality is if your mother's house burns down, now what? Or if he floods, I'm sorry, but... Oh, the bank can know. also flood. Anyway. No, no, but the bank is in a safe, and, and you, you can rent a, li a little box. Mm -hmm. Right. Or, yeah. or buy yourself a good quality yep. safe. And then put that's fireproof. That's for for right. most of my friends that got like guns and rifles, that's where you put that video. That's right. <laughs> you know? That's right. <laughs> so, so by doing those, and then take a minute that when they send you that policy that you review it. Look at what your limits are so that you're comfortable with what you're spending your money. Mm -hmm. You're gonna spend a lot of money on this and, and when a disaster happens, your life goes to hell, okay? Like I tell people, when something something goes wrong in your life, you're at your job or someplace, you come home and that's your safety. Yes. Well, if what happens when your safety net, your castle blows up? You're out there and it's very uncomfortable for you and it's very uncomfortable for your family. Yeah. So therefore, know that what you have, you're comfortable with it, you have some a little bit of working knowledge with it, and then call me. Absolutely, and, <laughs> and you know, and it's true. You gotta, you, gotta, you gotta have a professional helping you go through that process because doing it alone is not that easy. You know what surprises me? You always hear things you know and it's like a mantra right like during daylight uh, daylight savings time you change the batteries on your smoke detectors um, every three months you change the filters in your um, AC uh, and there are certain chores that you do every so often and the radio shows remind you to do it and you hear it everywhere oh daylight time uh, you know time to change the batteries I've never ever heard anyone talking about hey Take a camera or a, you know either video or look. The photo. only thing I hear from my from the insurance people, I'm not gonna say from my agent, from the insurance people is either I can lower your your policy three dollars a month, or you know you need to change over to us because you're gonna be we're gonna be cheaper here. 
But none of them has told her, hey, let me pay you a visit. What he's saying. Let yeah. me pay you a visit. And this is where you separate the one that's selling just the product and the one that's coaching somebody into protecting themselves. Mm-hmm. Let me go to your house, man. Let me look at. Let me do an assessment of the property. Let me look at the appraisal district. Let me look at the market value. Let me look at what you have inside of that property, and then I'm gonna come up with a solution. And if any agent will tell me that, I was like, hell yeah, come on over, up, you know, because now you're getting a set of set of uh, a second set of eyes to to um to evaluate what you have. Right, because he. That way, you're, you're, if something goes wrong, you can always go back to that agent and say to the insurance company, your agent told me how much I needed to have. Right. Okay, it wasn't me deciding it. I brought you in, and as a professional, you advised me what I have. Right. Now, if you don't take that, re- that recommendation, well, then that's your problem. But again, at least you're getting professional advice to look at those things. And, and, and going back to things we should do, if you're a landlord, I'm guessing the same thing you should do with every single one of your rentals. You should go at least once a year, or I don't know, whenever you, before you rent it or after you rent it and the tenant is moving, and videotape what you got in that house. And again, keep it in a safe place and say, this is the last video recording that I have to um, you know, have as a, a hard evidence of what the house looked like, what materials were put in you know, when we rehabbed it, any changes that have been done through the years. Absolutely. Just every single property do the same thing like it was your own, you know, occupied property. Well, but it's it's your money. And I would think that if it's your money that you're going to be interested in making sure that you get the most for your money. Mm-hmm. And so well, therefore. But the, 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 one of the things that we've noticed is that a lot of people step, they step over $100 bills to pick up pennies. Yes. And when they do that, they go for the cheap. Right. They say, okay, no, no, okay, my house is worth three hundred thousand, but you know, I don't need three hundred thousand. I only, I only need two hundred thousand, and all the variables that I got inside, I might have twenty thousand dollars, you know, and and so they start cutting themselves down because they want to manage their monthly cash flow, but when they have a casualty, that yeah, they because they haven't read the policy, they don't understand the provisions in the policy that penalizes you for not having the right amount of insurance. Right. You've got to insure yourself to value, or if you know you're going to underinsure your property because, um, let's say you bought an old building in the middle of Hancock, Texas, right? Place, okay, and it's you know the area is depressed, and you're going to try to revitalize it. So if you're going to spend, you know, I only paid a hundred thousand. It costs five hundred to rebuild that. So you you may not buy the five hundred thousand dollar policy, but look at the policy and develop a strategy that okay, actual cash value. How do I do this? And then be able to support that buy enough of insurance to make it still profitable for you. But then understand what you're going to have to do to make sure that if an event does happen, you collect that right amount of money. And by bringing out guys like myself, or myself, uh, uh, yeah. I, 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 uh, we'll go out and I we'll, don't see where you will go with somebody else. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> we'll go out to the property. We'll sit on and we'll look at it. Bring your policy. We'll look at it and say, okay, yeah, you're insured to value or you're not. Instead, if you're going to underinsure the property, why not get an agreed value endorsement where everybody agrees yeah, that this property is worth this? It saves so much problems. See. You have to understand that the insurance company, the adjuster for the insurance company, cannot represent both people. Right. It, it's a it's a they, conflict of interest. They work for the insurance company. Right, and they're going to represent them. So you have to understand if you're not going to bring a professional in, like you know, like yourself, if you're not going to bring in a professional, um, you better know what you bought and why you bought it and ex- have a, the strategies. And the, the reality is, on my case. I had no idea. All I, all I knew is I had the policy. Jose knew because he had he was the one that picked it, mm-hmm. um, uh, or maybe I was, but I didn't remember. I mean, we got a bunch of properties ongoing at the same time, and to kind of like remember which exactly policy uh, you know I had on that property, I just said, "Dale, this is what I'll do. I'm gonna send you a copy of it. You're gonna go through it, and you gotta tell me what I got, mm-hmm. and and that's where it's worth hiring a professional because that's exactly what he did." He reviewed it. The next day, he called me up and said, "Hey, this is what you got. This is what we need to do to work, to work through this claim." And I was like, "Okay, done." 
But maybe if I went and spent three days going through through a whole set of documents that is not my language, yeah. number one, <laughs> it's in English, but it's not really in English. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I read it and I'm like, okay, uh, what does that mean here? You know, you know what? Legalese. Exactly. Yeah. So just hand it over to the professional, let them go through it, let them coach you through the system and get what you need to get, you know? And, and when you when, when we look at it, we make recommendations and you go back to your agent and allow him to do what his professional job is to be able right. to come in and look at it. Uh, and then it's important to keep records so that way when you get in, you, you know what you're looking at. So it, it, it really makes a big difference. The better, more attention you pay to it, not just the bottom line, the better it'll happen uh, if an event happens. Um, so, like you said, with the the uh, your uh, fire detection systems and all that, you check it every year. You should check that policy because you'd be amazed. A, a guys, it's a very competitive market. There's a lot of new players in the market. A lot of guys that want your business, mm -hmm. and by shopping around, you can save. A quite a bit of money, well, especially well. if you've been with a company a long time. There's automatic escalations that you don't even know about. 100 here, 100 here, 100 here. After 10 years of being the policy, you'll find out that you're way, way over market price. Mm. That's interesting. And especially, um, you know, uh, for all those that are, you know, from out of the country, but at least here in the States, most insurance premiums are escrowed into the monthly payment. So if you're not really, really paying attention and looking at what you're paying, you just think, oh, maybe the taxes went up. Oh, maybe this other thing changed. Uh, it's just a little bit, uh, but like Dale is saying, every year it goes up a little bit, and it might not be your taxes. It's your insurance that's going up, and since it's escrowed, you're paying it every month with the uh, uh, mortgage, then you, you don't... You, you don't know. feel it. You don't feel it. Yeah. So I need I need to be the one. I need to go review mine. Um, yeah, I'm going to do the same. <laughs> I know that I have enough because I come from an insurance family. And when we were buying this particular house, I told the pet, I said, listen, I, the, the contract says I'm buying this thing for X amount. That's what I want the policy to be. Oh, but you don't have to go that far. So I remember the lady telling us, like, no, that's what I'm getting. What about the inside? And she's like, well, you can get a supplement, uh, a su supplemental rider for this and that. And I said, okay, I got paintings, I got this, I got that, and I, I want all of that to be covered for X amount. And she's like, oh my God, that's gonna jank up your policy X. And I was like, I don't care. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, you put money, time, you know, sweat, equity, all kinds of stuff into- And sentimental value. Sentimental value. Um, there's, and the thing is that this is the most common phrase I hear from everybody. I never thought it would happen to me. Yeah. I yeah. never thought it was happening. It's so sad to see a, a senior citizen who, who paid off their house and is, is, is living, cancel the insurance, and then all of a sudden they have a fire and they're out on the street. And there is the and saddest no thing no and nobody there to help. That, so. That's something that I want to touch uh, later on, you know, to just to ask you, you know, 28 years in this business, what's the worst you have seen, you know, like really, really bad stories that... Well, you know, he was telling me about a story uh, a couple of weeks ago or last week or so that I was like, really? She did that? And he's like, yep, I'm not going to say anything or whatever because this is going to stay, uh, you know, and, and I don't want to uh, bring any specifics but i'm i'm very intrigued into what oh, are like I, the weirdest occasions or the weirdest events that you've gone through in uh, in this business oh uh, i've uh <laughs> i've been through 26 hurricanes uh right. I've, I've seen everything i've seen a, a dog food plant get hit by a tornado where the guys came back and started working where they pick cows up out of a field and slaughter the ones that are all bloated that, I've seen that. I've seen f fish plants. I've seen uh, I've, I've, hoarders. I've seen anything that you can imagine. We've seen a lot of hoarders. We buy uh, some of those. Yeah, I've I, again. Those are are unbelievable. Uh, just trying to handle those kind of claims, but um, I've seen deaths. I've seen just anything imaginable. If you're watching this and you have a two-story house and you have kids, 
buy a safety ladder for your kids. Yes. You don't think it's going to happen to you, and I pray to God it never does, but buy a safety ladder and practice it. Okay. How, can can I, you elaborate I, I, a little bit I, how, how it works? Because some people might not even know what a safety ladder is. Is this the one that you put through the window and yes. it goes? Okay. Yes. It, that's it's it's not for the boyfriend to climb up. <laughs> It's well, for the kid that, to climb down that, in the event of a casualty, okay? That, I just want to make that clear. That's right, that's right. Because some boys, they, they know how to climb them up, you know? So. Well, that's what you have the shotgun for. Right, exactly. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So, again, the recommendation is... Buy a safety buy, Practice with your kids how to open yes. the window, put the uh, safety ladder down, and then go down the... Where to go. Where are you going to meet after yeah, an event? Where are you going to muster? Yeah. You know, um, a rally point. Yeah. When I when I moved into my house and that I put, I had a ladder in each of the bedrooms. I have four bedrooms upstairs, so I put four ladders in there for the kids, and I made a practice it. But I also went and bought ladders for my neighbors who had kids all around me because oh we don't need that. I said I hope to God you don't ever need it. I hope you don't ever need it. But if you don't have it you'll be so sorry well but one of the things the difference is uh, Dale that you you've been involved in the firefighting community for quite a while yes so you get the safety and you, you get that awareness it's automatic within you so anywhere you go now you're going to be paying attention to certain things that maybe Dennis and I don't do it yes um, when when I was in the Navy in the military and I was part of the damage control team so we were paying attention to things that the rest of the crew was not paying attention to right because you're and then your brain gets wired into that's how i think so if i don't know if you've seen that movie ronin uh with uh, uh robert de niro and um yeah, where, so. where these guys like like uh i don't know like uh you know big shot uh thief or whatever and he goes to europe to to do a hit and he walks into a building And somebody asked him a question, and he's like, listen, I never go into a building if I don't know even how to get out of it, and, and every di different exit strategy. So it's no different with a house. If you live in a property, you want to be aware of where your exits are, what, you know, if you got ladders or not, and if you don't have ladders, how are you going to jump off the second floor? Mm -hmm. Or which window are you going to take down to jump off the second floor? Uh, another thing that's becoming very common in, in the insurance policies is a protective devices endorsement, okay? The insurance company puts in there a protective device endorsement saying that you have to have X number of fire extinguishers on the property, right. you have to have X number of working um, uh, smoke, smoke alarms, yep. right? And if you don't, then they can cancel that policy even though you've been paying. So you need to see if they put in there. Another endorsement they put in. And now, they can do that on a renewal. Oh, yes. They'll renew it with, just like we were talking about your alarm system today. Oh, if you don't cancel it on time, it'll just get renewed for another year, and then I'm trying to cancel it, and then I can't. And the thing is, but they don't necessarily tell you that it's in there. Right. They, they may send you a notice, but what you do is like everybody else, you know, okay. Right. okay. Yeah. I got another piece of paper from the insurance company. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, Going in the and folder. Then And where it really makes a big difference is, is on your roofs. Because now they have a, a, an endorsement called the cosmetic endorsement, saying that if you get hit by hail and the hail doesn't actually break through the shingles and cause a hole in the shingles, it's not covered because right. it's just cosmetic. Well, again, cosmetics on a, on a rental property is, is very important. You, that curb appeal is going to help you rent it quicker. Yep. It's going to get you a higher dollar value. So you want to look and see, did they include a cosmetic endorsement in my policy? Did they have a protective, in, uh, a protective device endorsement? You need to look and see what's been added even over the years because it will dramatically affect your recovery. Okay. That's awesome. That, that is awesome, man. This is, uh, this is, <laughs> I'm learning a lot and I'm learning that I need to go review every insurance policy we've got with our agent. And you know, that'd be funny calling our ag agent saying, Hey, you know what? I want you to drive to every rental property we got and evaluate it and <laughs> Hey, earn your commission, right? So, yeah. so if he wants it, right, right. And and and, and during the claims process, there's. Uh, I'd like to come back later on and talk to you about like 
uh, the third party vendors that the insurance company hires, the TPAs, the guys who administered for the insurance companies, also so engineers. So this gets more complicated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it absolutely it does. It absolutely does. When I go, I, see, I attend a lot of their training classes because I have a continuing education. And mm -hmm. if I'm coming to you as a professional consultant, I better know their business and my business. Mm -hmm. So I go to their classes and I learn, and they stress to their people, get experts to back up your, your point of view. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're the insurance company and you're an engineer, you're going to do what he says because... He's your client. He's your client, <laughs> right. Not that you're gonna lie or anything for him, but still the fact is there's more than one way to look at an event. Mm -hmm. So, but um, there's a whole strategy to this and there's some really good books if somebody's in, really interested about claims and how claims are handled. Um, there's two books that I always recommend to my, prop, to my owners um, is From Good Hands to Boxing Gloves. Okay. Yeah, okay, and another one is deny, defend, uh, pretty delay. Pretty much happened to me because hey, I was, I was in good hands with my agent until he cussed me. Out. I mean, literally, he he just went off, and I was like, I need to go fight the insurance company and this guy too, <laughs> you know. And, and why would he? Why would he be so opposed to you getting some professional help? Right, I, I didn't get uh, you, that part. So right, right. Well, if you go to court, you want a lawyer. If you're mm -hmm. selling a house, you want a real estate right. agent. If you're doing taxes, you want a CPA. This is probably one of the biggest events in your life. Why not have somebody there who's looking out for you? And look, it's true. It's one of the biggest events in my life because I never had a house burned down on fire. <laughs> and you know what? I left that day like, hey, I spoke to the tenants and I said, listen, do you have a place to stay? I offer a hotel. I said, listen, I can put you in a hotel for the night because I know you have nowhere to go. They said, no, we're fine. We, we got a place to stay. And then the next day I talked to them again and I said, have you found a place to, to go lease? Because actually their lease was coming up expired. Mm -hmm. So luckily we had a property down in, in, in another part of the town, not far from, well, maybe about 20, 30 minutes drive. And they say, you know what, Ricardo, we'll just move there um, on the time being, and then we'll see if we find another property, and we'll pay rent over there. And so we moved them, literally. I actually used most of my guys to move them out. I, it wasn't me. It was either you or Jose, somebody. Um, we packed all their stuff that we could and put them in the new house. But this is the deal. What happens to them, right, to the tenants? And they didn't have renter's insurance, big mistake. So they lost everything. The least I could do was help them out as much as I could. Mm -hmm. And if you would have bought a different policy, that would have been covered. That would have been covered. That would have been covered. But remember, now with these lawyers coming in, if you hadn't had rehab that house, if your property wasn't as in good a shape as it was, it was a very nice place. If it hadn't have been, if you had neglected the air conditioning, if you hadn't taken care of rod or broken drawers or something like that they could come back and sue you and by just simply asking for hey the air conditioner caught fire where's your maintenance records yeah and then now you're paying for everything plus their pain and suffering their all their furniture and everything else that could go could go wrong well, one of the things is that particular day I was actually riding with Marcos um, mm -hmm. deed, uh, tax liens and tax deeds uh, friend of ours and a couple of his students from Brazil. He, he actually teaches people how to buy tax deeds and tax leads and, and invest in those kind of uh, transactions. And um, <laughs> he said, Ricardo, I couldn't ask for a better day to ride with you because I got to see one. We were riding, literally, we were going from house to house. This is a Sunday, just ex talking about each deal mm -hmm. in particular. And then I get a call from the tenant and said, man, house caught fire. And I was like, what? fire Sunday afternoon really so <laughs> I left for, from the area where I was I went and met them and then Marco said man I can take Uber back home and I was like don't worry about it I'll take you there but then on our way there he said man but you're so calm and I was like yeah why should I freak out you know it's it's a fire the tenants are doing okay I'm glad nobody died because it could have happened if, if it would have been in the evening they could have gotten trapped in the bedroom, mm -hmm. um, and that would have been horrible. I think I would have never been able to sleep that night if that would have happened. Mm -hmm. 
But that day I got home and I told my wife and she's like, so how was your day? And I was like, well, I rode around with Marcos and we saw a bunch of houses and yeah, one of our houses caught fire. And she's like, what? And she started freaking out. <laughs> and I was like, why are you freaking out? You know, and she's like, well, the house, you know, the tenants and now what happens? So I was like, I got insurance. Yeah. And I just it's went to bed. peace of mind. I have peace of mind throughout the whole process, but I actually got even better peace of mind when we hired Dale. Because now I didn't have to worry about it. All I had to do was do what he told me to do, the him and Danny. They said, Ricardo, we need access to the property. We need your policy. We need this. We need that. We need you to go put your claim in the insurance company. And I did all those things. And then from there on, I just went like that. They did what they had to do. Every time they needed something from us, they gave us a call and we provided the information if we had it. And a couple, a few weeks ago, we got a check. Um, I didn't pay him for a, lot of, a little while, but that's not his fault. <laughs> but uh, but finally, finally, you know, we, we kind of like settled on everything and uh, here we are. And now we're in the process of rebuilding the house. So now we're worried is, okay, when is the framing gonna be done? When is the roof gonna be in? After I get the framing in the roof, when is the electrician gonna go and rewire the property? When is the new plumber gonna rewire the property? I mean, uh, replumb the, the house. And when is the kitchen going in and those kind of things. And I was doing the budget today, uh, just at the top of my head, number by number, and I'll be fine. You know, with the money that we have, I'm gonna cut it close. Uh, you know, there's always gonna be uh, things that we forgot about or... right. Um, and, and when you're determining um, the value of your properties and, and what you're going to do, I always tell my clients to take a look at the, uh, to take a look at the, in case an event happens, how are you going to want to rebuild this? If you bought a property and it had custom built cabinets, if you're going to continue to use it as a rental, do you want to bring it back as custom built or do you want to put in builder's grade? Do you want to put in those beautiful hardwood floors or are you going to come back in with tile? That'll change your pricing and what you buy. Mm -hmm. So those are kind of things that you want to really look at because, again, nobody wants to pay too much for their insurance. You know, and, and to be honest with you, I was thinking about laminate, you know, laminate flooring just like we had before. But the reality is anywhere where there was tile, I got no issues because yeah. tile. So it's, it's, yeah, it's another reason to, uh, to put maybe, tile instead of laminate floor. Right. Yeah. So, but that increases the price a little bit because labor is more expensive on tile than it is on, on, on the laminate. Uh, it also takes a lot longer to do. Mm -hmm. um, but um, at the end of the day, those are things we're gonna reevaluate when we get there. Um, so this particular property had a lot of carpet and that was actually the last house I did with carpet. Okay. From there on, it was all laminate. Um, so guess what? This is not gonna have carpet anymore. <laughs> Actually, carpet is already gone, so yeah. it's it's on the bare uh, bottom on the uh, on the uh, on yeah, this lab. The concrete. Yeah. All right. Well, um, before we ask Dale, how can people find uh, his information? How to contact him? I w uh, there's one question I need to ask. Does it work the same way in all states? In terms of how do you handle the insurance uh, claim and all that, or? Does this vary state by state? Okay, the policies will vary state by state sl slightly. Okay. But the the basic the basics of uh, how to notify the insurance company that it's your responsibility to prove it to them. Mm -hmm. They don't have to prove it to you. That stays the same. So each state has different provisions in their policies, and that they you know. So you're going to have to look at that per state. Mm -hmm. I'm licensed in 17 states. So, um, oh, I'm, so you can do uh, insurance claims in 17 states. Um, right now, I today we negotiated a 10 million dollar claim wow. in Daytona Beach, Florida. Wow! So yeah, I was happy. When, when are you going to Daytona? <laughs> the funny thing is, the first day I walked into this building, it got hit by the uh, by the hurricane. the uh, The first adjuster told me, "Oh, I don't think it's going to make 500 thousand dollar deductible." And I looked at him and I said, two things are going to happen today." you're going to give me the name of the guy that's going to replace you and I need you to set a reserve um, of at least eight million dollars for this loss. Let me talk about reserves. 
if you're going to talk to your insurance agent, I always recommend you you hire us up front. So let me come and do your talking. Right. I know I know what to ask. I know what to say. I know what to do. But if you think no, I I got to give them a chance before the guy leaves, the adjuster leaves your property. Ask him what he set the reserves at. He's going to have to call the carrier and say, "Hey, I think this claim is a hundred thousand dollar claim." set a hundred thousand dollars aside to pay for this claim you'll get an idea where he is with this claim if he says oh i think it's a 30 or forty thousand dollars and you're thinking it's 150 you know you got a problem oh, right you're away. way far right ask him what the reserves what did he set the reserves for that way you'll know you'll have a good understanding of where you're going if he says well i don't know then you want to start he, he he knows if he's experienced and has any knowledge at all he knows what he's he, when you look at something and you look as many losses as we do a, a typical insurance adjuster handles 600 losses a year mm -hmm. that's a lot of losses yeah two okay. a day at least yeah man i need to start looking into that business because <laughs> you start collecting all, all those fees they they pile up yeah. you know so Ask him what it is. He knows he's going to have to call his, his supervisor and say, hey, set the loss reserves for this amount there. That'll give you an idea of where it's going. And if he won't tell you, that's telling you something too. Or I need to bring out my preferred contractor to look at it. Well, yeah. he, there's problems there. there there's, like, a, there's a conflict of interest. There most certainly yeah. is a conflict of interest. And that's one of the things that I'll come back and talk about is that conflict of interest what what are what is that relationship the, the, um, I can go into some detail about what that relationship is what they're looking for how they how what programs are available there's so there's there's a there is a very underlying thing that they they hire professionals they have things all worked out they have a team their team is already established before your loss ever occurred. They have a team set up to, to help minimize or help mitigate. Um, yeah, mitigate their loss and that and control their loss. You should have a team too. You should know, be the captain of your team, know what you have, but bring in people that are going to help you to make sure that you're going to come out not ahead, but not at least you don't want to lose anything. Yeah. Yeah. And all I can say is I'm so happy Mr. Dale is on my team. <laughs> Just so you know. So, so I don't I guess we'll probably have to at no, some point I bring think, Dale back. I think this one this one will be a repeat uh, yeah. because Dale has got a lot of information that not only us but the people watching us need to really take notes on and and uh, and learn and and take action in I'm, I know I'm taking he just gave me a whole list of action action items for yeah. me you know like I need to go look at all the policies for the rental properties I need to look at my policy for my house I need to know I need to know exactly what I got and maybe we can sit down one day oh, and yeah. review them absolutely uh, because I, I know who's gonna be doing those claims <laughs> <laughs> Thank so you. hopefully hopefully I don't have to get any claims you know that's right but but because insurance is one of those things that you buy and you never want to use yeah exactly um, right. and, and like my father used to say too he's like or he says he's like son there's no such thing as too much insurance <laughs> you know you only need you what, what happens is is you need to get what you need mm -hmm. but if you insure for a little bit more nothing wrong with that you know you're just covering you know covering yourself against any any maybe yeah. the uh, and everybody going back to that nobody thinks it's ever going to happen to them there's probably I would say average 10 fires a day in the city of Houston Wow just the city of Houston. Just the city of Houston. So that does not count Fort Bend County and no, right. Montgomery <laughs> County, Waller. No, none of that. And then you add events like um, it's just now. That's just fires. There's more water claims than there are fire claims. You would be surprised how many high rises somebody gets mad at their boss and goes kicks the commode over in the bathroom on the seventeenth floor and it floods it all the way down, or a water pipe breaks or the hose in your dishwasher breaks or your washing machine breaks or like happened in Sealy a microburst comes through and probably totaled 25 houses wow. and a hotel so 
there's things that happen and you don't, don't want it to happen, but you need to be prepared in case it happens. Have a plan. Okay? The government tells us all the time, have a plan. What are you going to do if an event happens? Know what you're going to do. Know what your protections are. Know what your policy says. And bring out your team to help you to make sure that you recover in a way. Well, if you want to have Mr. Dale Terry on your team, go to www.crossroadsira.com, which stands for Insurance Recovery. Uh, www.crossroadsira.com and uh, do you mind if we give the phone number? Sure, go right ahead. Number is cell phone. He's, I'm going to give you his cell phone, okay? For you ladies out there, don't be calling at weird hours, okay? <laughs> I don't want Mr. Well, Dale to get in troubles. Uh, well, fires happen at weird yeah. hours. <laughs> if a fire happens or maybe or maybe a flood or something, yeah, we, we Wait get till it. the next morning. I, I got to tell you a real quick story. I'm laying in bed, 4 o'clock in the morning one day, and my phone rings. I reach over, I pick it up, and it's a client of mine. He had a fire, and um, the couple of days before, I got him $5,000 advance from the insurance company. Always ask for an advance, first thing. Remember, you're going to need it. This is so yep. much information. Okay. So he says, hey, listen, um, I went over to Lake Charles, and I lost in gambling. Can you loan me $5,000? And I said... You called me. My wife is laying next to me. If I give you five thousand dollars, she'll kill me. So, yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah, but I just don't want a lady to be calling at four o'clock in the morning, you know, because then your lady will not even ask who's calling. She'll just do it, you know. She'll be just done and over with. Anyways, cell phone number is two eight one eight three one four one one six. Again. 281-831-4116 and you can uh, send an email to dale at crossroadsira.com dale at crossroadsira.com if you need to talk to dale to um, maybe do a claim or or maybe just to consult with your policy send me a message i'll get you in contact with dale if you couldn't get the number or you didn't get the email address no, we'll get that put the information in the uh yeah, comments we'll, down below that's and, right and, and one other thing i'm very proud of the video testimonials i get from my clients if you go to my uh, my website go to video testimonials and look these are real people who've been through it and they'll tell you what happened to them well this video will be on the video testimonials just Great. so you'll know so <laughs> it's just gonna be about an hour and 15 minutes long uh, <laughs> but I don't think Dale's testimony. got a problem with I that I don't have a problem uh, with that. And, and for this is for Dale's audience Dennis and I and a couple of other uh, people we own different companies where we buy we rehab properties we flip them for sale or for rent actually for the most part is rentals we also wholesale properties. Uh, we have a marketing business. We, we got all kinds of different business tied around real estate. And we suffer a casualty on one of our rental properties and we hire Mr. Dale and his crew to uh, assist us through the, through the, um, through the process and, and, and the claim. We could not be more happy of what they've done for us and, and we thank you for that. No, thank you. Um, and that's one of the reasons we're doing this podcast in, in our channel uh, for, uh, we're actually, we need to load this one up in Same as Cash yeah. and uh, Renovating Riches. And also, um, if you see this, go find us uh, online, Same as Cash in YouTube and uh, Renovating Riches in YouTube, although, do we have any videos there yet? Not no, yet. No, not we're yet. We, they, they're coming. We, we got a trail of about, I don't know, 20 or 30 videos that we need to upload uh, in the next mm -hmm. few days. So if you're watching, the, if you're on, web, on Dale's website right now on crossroadsira.com uh, and you're watching this video, I highly encourage you to hire Mr. Dale and his crew. He's okay. going to do the best he can to, to guide you through the process and to coach you through the process. And to make sure that you're going to get what you need, uh, need to get from the insurance companies. And very important, hire someone that's licensed. Because uh, yes. Dale mentioned it, that he's licensed in 17 states. Yes. So if you're not in Texas, you're somewhere else, and you need to hire someone, what's the best way? Is there like an association of, uh, of insurance claim adjusters, uh, whatever title? Call me. I'll, ma I'll make a referral to you. Okay. Okay? There's, because there's different types of public adjusters. 
um, obviously I'm a large loss adjuster. Mm -hmm. I handle larger claims, but if you have a roof claim, there's guys that specialize in roofs, smaller guys, claims, smaller okay. claims and that kind of stuff. So, so it just depends what you need. Call us. I, I, I'll be more than happy to advise, give you some recommendations about where to go, how to check people out, things to ask for about your public adjuster. There's good ones and there's not so good ones, like, and, like and so we want you to make sure you're hooked up with the right guys. There's a, or there's the national you know, association. You know, believe it or not, that's one of the conversations we had. Yeah, we we said, is this the is this the right guy? You know, should we hire? Why don't we wait for other phone calls to come through and see who they are, right? But once we went and did our due diligence, we said, no, we couldn't get a better one. This guy is in our area. Number one, he lives close to where we live. He's involved with the community. Um, you know, he's involved with the firefighting department. So who knows better from a fire than somebody that's involved in the mm -hmm. firefighting department? Uh, he's got... So there were no reasons why we would say we don't want to work with Mr. Dale. Right. And, you know, we, we put our money where our mouth was that day. And sure enough, man, we... It, you know, it took a little longer because the, the company made it... Um, the insurance company made it a little... Um, slow, challenging, challenging. <laughs> all right. So we would all get on the same t on the same page. But at the end of the day, we uh, I talked to the adjuster, and uh, you know he called us and he, he apologized. He said, "Hey, man, this t this is taking longer than it's supposed to, and this is the reasons why." And and he did mention, you know, Mr. Dell and and um, or Crossroads Insurance was actually asking me for certain things that I had to agree on. So acknowledging that you know what i mm -hmm. had to go and up 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 a little bit the claim because they were asking and i said okay man no problems thank you so much i appreciate the help and great guy by the way yeah uh, i met him and he's a great guy uh yeah. he's actually one of the best adjusters in the houston area for for what i've been told from other agents and um but that was the end of the story you know we 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 did the right thing which is hire uh, uh dale and his team and 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 i recommend every anybody that has a, a an adjuster or a claim uh, that needs to be uh, properly represented, this is a person. So there is uh, there's two organizations that you can check out your public adjuster. One is called TAPIA, the Texas Association of Public Insurance Adjusters, and there's a national one. It's called uh, NAPIA, the National Association of Public Adjusters. So yeah. those are two places that you can go to get good qualified referrals and be able to talk to professionals to, to assist and you. Probably, you can probably go to their websites and see if they're like got better, better business bureau, uh, you know, uh, qualifications, Certifications, uh, yeah. testimonials, <laughs> just like you said. You yes. know, it's kind of hard to convince your buddies, hey, man, can you shoot this video for me? And then your buddies are like, ah, come on, man. So, you know, you're, you're, yeah, that's the truth. Uh, and maybe if they say something, it's not going to be that good, you know? <laughs> so, so anyways, I think uh, we've been going on for about an hour and a half now, Dennis. Yeah, we need to... Uh, we're very close to the end of the program. Actually, we're past our, our time. Yeah, so we just want to thank Dale, you know, so much for all the information. I think this was very, very, you know, instructional, educative for our, for our audience, ourselves, um, and w I'm pretty sure we're gonna have to have Dale back another time to talk a little bit I more think about the claim process. We need to do, need to do a, cu a couple of more episodes. <laughs> you know what? It would be great from a house. What would be great if we can go maybe when, when he comes across a claim. And we can shoot a video. The problem is, it's somebody else's property, so yeah. I don't know, you know. But maybe we can do something from an actual claim and say this is the process that we're going through, and and kind of like put it out there. Um, I have no problem with that. Um, I have a video that uh, tells people how to do their flood claims. See, flood claims are done very specific. They're very meticulous, and I would be more than happy to have to show you show the people how to handle uh, a, a flood claim, the documentation necessary to show them so that you they have a better understanding because I can't handle all floods. When a flood comes... Right, it's too I, many houses. Right, I, held, I handle as many as I can, but I'll be more than happy to share my information, my documentation, the forms that they need, and walk people through that. Kind so of you know who we're going to call when the next thing happens in town. He's like, all right, Mr. Dell, where are you going to be at? <laughs> why, why you want to know that, guys? Well, we're bringing the camera. <laughs> and we're going to shoot a live video on how to properly 
may submit a claim for maybe flood or fire or tornado or whatnot. And when he says, bring your boots, your <laughs> rubber boots, you know why, right? <laughs> it's going to be wet. <laughs> so, uh, well, and the mask. And the mask, that's right, and the mask. <laughs> so, uh, but I don't know what mask, you know. Maybe I showed up with a Batman mask or something, you know. It's like, so you, you came to a party or what, you know. Uh, anyways, thank you so much, Dale, for uh, allowing you. Uh, uh, no, thank your you. time uh, here uh, with us tonight. Appreciate it. I know you. it's um, it's late, and for everybody out there, just remember, CrossroadsIRA.com, Dale Terry, Tell them Ricardo and Danny sent you, and he'll know exactly um, where to send that check to. <laughs> 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 no, nah, I'm just kidding. Just, guys, hire professionals for everything you do. Dale, Mr. Dale is a professional in the industry. He's been doing this for 28 years, just like he said. Um, you couldn't ask for better guidance. So I got peace of mind now that I got somebody like this on my team, and you should do the same. I, I, even if you're not an investor. If you just need a homeowner's, um, you know, question or, or whatever, hey, that's your safe haven, just like you said. Look after it. Make sure your policies are, you know, up to date. And, and, and if you ever have to submit a claim, if you don't remember this, you know we did a program about this, give me a call. I'm going to put you in contact with Mr. Dell. That way he can help you out. With right. that being said, we're going to end this program. We're going to end this program. We're going to wish you a good night. Um, or I don't know if people are going to drink beer. No, today's Wednesday. Mm. <laughs> um, but uh, we're going to wish you a good night, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks, Dave. Thank, Thank you. you. Gracias por escuchar y ver nuestro show renovandoriquezas.com. Búscanos y danos un like y cinco estrellas en YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn y cualquier otra red social en donde puedas encontrarnos.